Magic is dead to birds, according to this article from the New York Times that we're going to be taking a look at in today's fantastic episode of what I could do to delay the inevitable of darkness. There are people on the planet that get paid to do magic tricks to birds, and then people get paid to write articles about the people that do magic tricks to birds. And then there are people like me that get almost no money to make videos about the articles about the magicians doing tricks for birds. Gay transition. Hey, look at that production value, my friends. Every time I see it, I get surprised. So here's the article from the New York Times. Uh, this was written by Veronique Greenwood. Veronique Greenwood. Uh, usually I like to check them up, see how they look like, see if they're attractive. I would stick my, my dinky inside of them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, not bad, uh, not bad, I would say. She is uh, not great, but not bad, not bad. Looks like one of those teachers uh, you might find in class. Maybe after a couple months, you might find her more attractive just by uh, virtue of not being surrounded by anything else. You know, you're only seeing her. Although this one does make her look like she voted for Hillary twice, so. I don't know about that one. But here's the article. Magic tricks may fool you, but these birds can see right through them. And it's a couple of what we in the business call a false transfer. In magic, anytime you hear the word false transfer, you might think, oh, this is something scientific. No, my friends, it's not complicated. Magic isn't difficult. Magicians like me try to make it sound difficult so we keep people out of it because we're trying to make ourselves seem more special than we actually are. But it's just simply keeping it in the same hand. It looks like it's going from this hand to this hand, right? But it's actually staying in the same hand. It's a false transfer. You're not transferring the object from one hand to another. That's what's taking place. And it seems like these birds don't fall for it. So here, Homer, the Eurasian J, was not fooled by the uh, false transfer move that you could see here, where he's apparently transferring it to his right hand, but he keeps it in his left hand. The bird goes, no, man, it's in your left hand, bruh. I guess he's not a Eurasian J. He's more uh, like a... Um, Caucasian gay. Let me try my best to explain that. Uh, usually gays don't really have a lot of filters when it comes to things they say, and especially Caucasian gays. So if you're doing a false transfer move, the person that's more likely to call it out if they see it is going to be a, a Caucasian gay. That was the explanation of the previous joke. So this was conducted by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, who apparently reports on Eurasian jays and uh, they're trying to determine the intelligence of these particular birds here's another variation known as the french drop which was my nickname in high school right because of all the frenchies i dropped and you could see the birds thinking and he finds he finds uh what seems to be a worm it looks like a nail that he's feeding to the bird i think it might be a, some sort of a dried thing there but a uh, good technique there good technique on the french palm typically it's done terribly Usually you see magicians go, oh, look, here is the object, and it's gone um, because you're dropping. You're dropping the object in your hand, but the bird doesn't fall for it, and the technique here is sound. It's a very well-executed move. Definitely would fool crackheads. However, did not fool the bird. Here it has a little insight as to what's taking place. It says, human observers relying on their understanding of how human hands work were deceived by Mr. Garcia Pellegrin's cues. But the birds simply watched the worm and picked whichever hand they seen it last, the researchers believe. Now you might think that this indicates the intelligence of the bird being far more than that of the average human. And you'd be right. You'd definitely be right in that because, uh, well, us humans, we're not typically the uh, sharpest tools in the shed. Just look at things we consider as normal. Just look at this article from Lingualio dot com where they talk about 10 weird things that we do uh humans cry we're just a bunch of pussies right we hiccup have you ever been able to explain a hiccup we fucking die this is actually a terrible article to prove my point you know it's really weird when humans don't subscribe to the pig cake magic academy where five dollars a month gets you two videos every single week going over card and coin stuff you get access to over a thousand videos already the moment you sign up different to other services that they only give you a limited amount of content you get all my content the moment you sign up my friends and less for the price less for the price 
only for the small, small price of $5 a month. That's like a Red Bull. That's like a White Claw. And I hear you can't even buy a drink in America's penis because our prices are so inflated because of tourism. So go ahead, don't be weird. Check out the Pig Cake Magic Academy. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Look at this, you get access to this guy right here on a daily basis, because I upload all the time. If I'm not uploading on the Academy, I'm uploading here, and you wanna be on top of that. So in this third experiment uh, called the Fast Pass, Homer the J was duped. It's this kind of quick shuttle action where you're throwing the object from one hand to the other, and I guess the bird, in his infinite stupid fucking wisdom, thought that it was in a, the same hand that it started in. Little did he know, your boy right here did some sleight of hand trickery and just threw it to the other hand really quickly, and the bird was duped. So he didn't, in fact, get the worm, you fucking bitch. I love how the article kind of ends with a little bit of a teaser, a cliffhanger as to potential ways that the experiment could go. Looking ahead, what kind of a trick would play on Jay's expectations of the world? Ideally, the experimenter would be a bird and not a person capable of the same motions and gestures as the Jays, which just leads me to think that at some point somebody's gonna get paid to dress up as a giant J and do these moves on the uh, smaller actual uh, Homer the bird. So my friends, I think that unequivocally proves one thing and one thing alone in that coin magicians are among the worst of the worst when it comes to the spectrum of magic because your stuff can't even fool birds. Could you imagine doing some complicated, eloquent magic trick that you spent years practicing and a bird catches you out without even trying? But that's the article I'm gonna be linking in the description below if you wanna read it. There's also some other bits where they do the uh, cups and balls, the birds that I'm also gonna be leaving there. But that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, right? Trying out new ways of giving you guys content here, as you could see, expanding myself, spreading my wings, if you would, like that, ties into the video. I did a podcast recently for the uh, the magic guys, right? The magic guys, these fun Australian lads. It was fun being on their show. I think we talked about some interesting stuff. It was the longest one I think they've recorded. We talked about uh, ding dongs and uh, very little conversation on actual magic, maybe a, a little bit, like five minutes total in the two hours. But I still think it was an interesting time and, and fun. I like getting on uh, these podcasts and seeing what magicians have to say about it. I think I'm going to be on the Penguin one in a little bit. So that's going to be uh, fun to see. But uh, check it out. Check it out. I'll also be leaving that in the description section below. Uh, as far as uh, what I'm going to do, I don't know. What am I going to do today? I, I, I went to Publix and got groceries. Publix is a, a store that's mostly, uh, I would say, mostly inundated by my type of people, Cuban trash, right? So I feel right at home in there. And uh, the traffic with the carts is always a nightmare. And school is back. School is back. So conveniently, I chose the best time to go, which is directly after school, which is when all the uh, MILFs go with their kids. And, you know, you could ask them questions and be like, man, I'm a single man and I don't know which one of these oils to get. What's the difference between extra virgin and normal olive oil? Right. What's the difference? Let me know. You know who's not an extra virgin? Me. We could find that out later tonight. Um, Samantha, you know, 